Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Whew. Everything here is for tall people. I gotta adjust. There you go. All right. Go make this work. So today was a today was a surprise. Today, um, it's you guys all on this side. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for filling a need. Uh, it's it's beautiful. I, I love seeing it. Um, you guys are great, too. I love y'all. <laughs> but I just want to extend a, a shout-out and a thank you. Uh, good morning to our Fuel uh, online community. Good to see you guys. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, like I said, a surprise. I came here, and I was telling Eliza, uh, I there's certain words that I say all the time up here. And I was like, I need to stop. I need to just find other words, like, like amazing. I, I can't stop saying amazing. Everything is amazing, right? And then I was like, okay, God, I don't want to say that anymore. And all of a sudden, on my Spotify list, just sh- on shuffle, this song came on. I'm not going to sing it for you, but I just broke because it was all about um, awesome. I'm sorry. Awesome was the word. Everything about God is awesome. My God is awesome. My God brings me through the valleys. My God covers me from the rain. My God is awesome. And I was like, I sh- okay, God, I hear you. <laughs> I'm not going to stop saying that. I'm not going to stop saying that about you. Um, for those of you guys who know about our journey, you know, we've been here for seven years, going on eight, and uh, planted in this community, seen so many highs, and it currently going through a low. Uh, We're on a 90-day pause, and that's not a pause saying, you know, we're not going to do anything. It's a pause that says we are going to seek the Lord together. We're not going to create any new ministries. We're not going to worry about the building fund and what's going on there. We're going to focus on what God is saying in this time of need. We're going to focus and get close to him and see what he's saying in this time. Is that, where's that monkey coming from? Do y'all hear that? Oh. <laughs> um, sorry. I, I thought that was somebody's ringtone. I was like, who's, who's getting blown up on their text messages? <laughs> I was like, that's not an Apple phone for sure. <laughs> that's somebody's Android ruining everything. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, let's pray. Let's pray. <laughs> Uh, I've, I've, been, I've been stuck on this prayer, you guys. Somebody prayed this for me, and I, I, I can't let go of it, so I'm going to pray that right now. Father God, you are awesome, and we love you. And I, I thank you for my family that's here with me right now. I thank you for my family and friends that are watching online, and I thank you for our guests. And I thank you for our visitors. Lord, would you speak today? God, would you fill us up today? Would you be here with us, with your presence, just reign. And God, I I pray that we would come, that we would approach you, Lord, humbly. That we would come as, as just sons, that we would come just as daughters. God, regardless of what our title is, God, we don't come to you today as pastors. We don't come to you today as an executive director. We don't come to you today as president of chief operating officer, pizza guy, whatever, God, these titles, we don't come to you with them. Lord God, would you relieve all this pressure that we have? Would you take away, Lord God, what might be hindering us to go straight to your heart, to go straight into your arms? Take that pressure away in Jesus' name. That we would come just as children, that we would come as a son. We would come as a daughter. And that all we would want right now is you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Whew, so somebody pray that over me, you guys. And, you know, in this time that we're in, you know, I'm stepping up here. I've been gone for a while. And, and God has radically changed my life. God is doing something. He's shifting things. And 
that naturally comes with pressure. That naturally comes with, okay, now I have to do this, this, and this. I have to have my schedule like this. I have to be with people. Oh, I got a wife and two kids as well, and they're starting school. It, and there's a natural pressure that's building up. And I know that's natural for all of us. Amen? That's, that's just how we live. And it was building up and building up. And I'm just like, I'm here, so I have to have that. I have to have that pressure. Pressure's good. It makes diamonds, right? <laughs> but I, I came to this, this prayer meeting, the, the 400. I'm sure The Rock is familiar with that. I went there, and, and somebody laid hands on me, and they said, this pressure is not yours. This pressure is not for you to have. And that right now you need to come as the sun. And I'm just poof, melted, broke down. And uh, I believe that's, that's a word for us, too. I don't think that's just for me. I think that's for you guys. I think that's for you in this room. I think for you guys who randomly clicked on this video because they saw some random dude up there with Nikes. Um, <laughs> that you decided to click, and all of a sudden, you're hearing this message. All of a sudden, you're here today as a guest. Um, I believe that's for you. Amen? So... Let me get my notes out. <laughs> Today, uh, today's message is called Patchwork. Aliza makes these beautiful pieces of art, and she just, I say, this is what I'm going to preach about, and then boom, she makes them. <laughs> but today, it's, it's patchwork, and we're going to be talking about faith, we're going to be talking about unity, and we're going to be talking about brokenness. So if you're taking notes, those are the three tabs are they going to hear this bird online? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> I'm not crazy. There's a bird up there. Um, faith, unity, and brokenness. You, this, this term patchwork came to me because I feel like we're always trying to fill in these gaps. You know, as, as believers, it's like faith. Okay, I'm supposed to have that. This is where it is. Oh, man, it's not working really well, but, but I have to have it. We're, we're working on it. Unity, I think that's a constant. You know, we all want that. What are we doing to have that? What is each step we're taking towards that look like? And I think there's a difference when we do it, and there's a difference when God does it. Amen? All right, let's get into it. Romans 1, 16 through 17. If you've got your Bibles, turn there. You got your phones? Tap there. I am in your mood today. It's going to be awesome. All right. Here we go. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteousness will live by faith. If you're a highlighter or you like to underline, underline from first to last. <sighs> from first to last. That, that hit me. And I've, I've heard this scripture a lot, Romans 1.16, I'm unashamed of the gospel. Hear it in a lot of rap songs nowadays. Um, but that part right there. <laughs> From first to last. Faith is at the beginning of our salvation process, right? And it's also the goal. It's also the goal. And I love that. That means faith never ends. Faith is at the beginning when I said, Jesus... I am desperate for you. Jesus, I need you in my life. Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, I believe that your blood and your sacrifice on the cross paid for all my sin. When we entered that point, that was a lot of faith. And if you can remember the day that you gave your life to Jesus, believe me, you were glowing that day. <laughs> but then it says... Um, from first to last, that means it's, it's, it's never going to end. The Amplified Bur uh, Bible says to awaken more faith. I love that. 
as scripture says, we are unashamed of the gospel. And we have faith and we believe. Um, I, I thought it would also be easier to maybe understand what faith isn't, right? And I heard this um, spoken word. Does anybody like spoken word in this house? Yeah, I love spoken word. Who doesn't know what spoken word is? That's, <laughs> that's okay too. But uh, it's, it's like poetry. It's like somebody who comes here and there's no music and they're literally sharing what's on their heart. It might rhyme, it might not, but it's, they call it spoken word. But this is by Art Azurdia. What is authentic faith? The cultivation of an optimistic outlook on life with a kind of spirituality attached to it, a holy hoping for the best. <laughs> I like that. Is this how you think of faith? Authentic faith is that, is a confident assurance in events not yet seen. Faith is not a call to believe in things when common sense tells you not to. Faith is not a mindless stab in the dark. It is not a crossing of the fingers and hoping for the best. It is not a leap into apparent nothingness. It's a word that speaks of reasoned, careful, deliberate, and intentional thought. Thought upon what? God and his promises. Amen. If you are absolutely gripped by the coming realities that have been promised to you by God, then how you live your life in the present will be radically different than if you did not possess that certainty. That is what faith is, my friends. Positive certainty expressed in action. Here's my favorite part. Authentic faith is not merely believing in God. It is believing God. I'm sure the person, the original author, said it with more. But <laughs> that's what it is. And I love that. It tells us what faith isn't and what faith is. I love that. We're in this 90 days of pause, and we're not crossing our fingers, right? That's not what we're doing here. We're not, we're not just hoping for the best. It's not this, this, this mindless 90 days of pacing back and forth, hoping that whatever happens next is going to be great. No, it's not that. It's this pushing forward. It's this in our grief, in our healing, in our restoration, we know that God has a plan. We're putting our faith entirely in him. Galatians 2.20. This is one of my favorite ones. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. This is continuing our faith. This is continuing walking in our faith. I hope you're encouraged by that. We ask in faith, right? We walk in faith. We give in faith. And we hope in faith. You guys, by faith, I'm literally standing here right now. If you, if you know my story, and for those of you who I've been sharing every single day why I'm here, or not every day, but every Sunday why I'm here, the only reason why I'm able to do what I do is because of faith. And, and I know that we're all holding hands doing that together. Um, you guys have, have hopped into such, in the middle of a journey with us, because we're in the middle of our 90 days, right? We're, we're close to the end. And we're like, okay, Pastor Dan is gone. Love that man. That's my uncle too, if you don't know. And we've been through a lot. He's done a lot. He's been a part of this community. He's enriched this community. He's enriched this body. And now we celebrate his home going, and we're still here. And at any moment, you guys, I'm in tears. It's, it's crazy. From inside of the car to a coffee shop, it doesn't matter. Like, like, God is doing something, and he's not done, right? 90 days trusting in the Lord and putting all of our faith in him. Turn to Hebrews 11.1 1 for me. the BSB translation. 
says, now faith is the assurance of what we hope for and the certainty of what we do not see. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Um, I had a, an amazing Friday, you guys. Friday was the best day of the week for me. Not that this isn't good, I love this. Um, but Friday was amazing. I walked, all right, I parked my car. I went to Loyal Coffee here in the Springs. And as soon as I get out of the car, who do I see? Who calls out my name? Ali Bim. <laughs> Ali Bim. She just goes, Jarrell. And I go, Ali. And we hug. And if you know our history, Ali Bim was part of the youth ministry that my wife and I helped start with Field, with Field Church. We launched, I'm ready, you know the, do you know the, type, the, <laughs> the name of our ministry? Fuel, student-led youth ministry, the longest title of any ministry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, she was a part of that, and I, I, I watched her grow. I watched her lead. I, I watched her take on projects, and uh, as time went on, I watched her become a woman. I, watched her, I saw her got, get married. I was like, wow, Allie, good to see you. I hadn't seen her in a long time. Okay, I get in there, we say hello as we separate. She does work, and I'm going to go do work over here, order my coffee. Loyal does not serve anything pumpkin. It's upsetting. <laughs> I was like, do you all have any pumpkin spice? They're like, no, we don't. I almost left, but I was like, oh, it's fine. I'll stay, I'll stay. And so I get my coffee, and I sit down, and who do I see? I see a friend that I haven't seen in a long time, and I... I, I I get him, and I'm like, I grab him, make a scene at the coffee shop, and I bring him to my table, and we talk, we talk, we talk life, we share what's going on. God recently blessed him with a car, and he it came out of nowhere, and we we're sharing blessings. It's great. He went off to work. Um, after that, I'm doing work. I'm, I'm preparing exactly what I'm sharing with you guys now, and then all of a sudden, um, two guys sit next to me. And I don't know about you guys, but in coffee shop, it's hard to not hear what other people are talking about. It just is. And so this guy was like, I got a wedding I need to prepare for. And then in like two weeks, I got two more weddings I got to prepare for. And I'm, I'm getting giddy, right? Um, I'm like, oh, man, because Marlena sitting right here and Shane in the back holding the camera, their daughter is getting married next summer. Woo! <laughs> Uh, Bree, if you're watching, that's you. Um, they're getting married next summer, and they asked me to officiate. And I've never done anything like that. And again, also, another young woman who started in our ministry watched her grow up and how she's getting married. She asked me to officiate. Huge blessing. I get giddy listening to this guy, and I had to interrupt. I was like, hey, I'm doing the same thing, but next summer. And we get to talking. And uh, come to find out they're pastors, pastors at New Life. And my prayer for the last couple of weeks has been, God, bring, bring the community together. God, I need pastor friends because I have like one. <laughs> I need more. And they're pastors. And we share our stories a little bit. Uh, my work that needs to be done is, is getting sidetracked. <laughs> But it's okay. No pressure, right? Um, and we exchange numbers. And he texts me as soon as I leave that coffee shop and we're getting coffee uh, next week. Right. Connection is happening. Duh. And then I'm there for hours, you know? And then I'm on my way to the bathroom and all of a sudden I see somebody I recognize. It's crazy, right? It's just in this little coffee shop. And I grab him by the shoulder and I'm like, hey, what are you doing here? His grandfather just passed away. You know, we're dealing what we're dealing with. We got to minister to each other. I got to minister to him. And it was good. I didn't get much done that day. But God, God did the work. God did the work. And it was so good to see you guys. 
And that's what, I, that's what I'm hoping for for us as Fuel Church, that we look for these divine appointments, that we pray for these divine appointments, right? Things that, that we can start pulling towards, you know? And you guys, literally four years ago, um, if I were in the same coffee shop and I saw all these things happening, I would have been just a shell, sitting down, doing my work, because that's, that's, that's not how I was. But God is changing us. God is doing something, and, and I'm hoping that as a church and as a body, we can recognize things that are going on and in faith step out and do something about it. In faith, grab them by the shoulder and say, how are you doing? Pastor Dan was all about the how you were doing, wasn't he? And then he put his other hand on your shoulder and say, how are you really doing and really getting to the hearts? And I think that's what our community needs. They need people who really care. They need people who, who will go the extra mile and say, let me walk with you. Let me hear you out. Certainty of what we do not see. That's a hard one, right? Like, how can I be certain if I can't see it, if I can't touch it, if it doesn't even feel right? How can I be certain of these things, God? But if God is saying that about our 90 days, Right? To have certainty of what we do not see at the end. To be in this place, to seeing everything that we've gone through, to seeing half of our families go last summer. Like, how can I be certain, God? And if you're not there yet, if you're in that place, it's okay. Because He's patient. Amen? God is patient. But if you've been here for a while and you've been praying with fuel, when we hear for such a time as this, it feels like it's around the corner, right? From our leaders' prayer and prophecies from the Rock Church, with our combined hope and faith, our faith is bubbling up to see what's next. My faith trusts in the Lord and what he's doing with Field Church and with each of us. I had a conversation with Mr. Jim uh, after church. I talked about Gideon uh, last Sunday. I love Jim. Jim is awesome. <laughs> Jim is your encyclopedia to the Bible. If you got questions, that man got answers. And, if, and when you're in conversation with him, it's funny. He'll go, did you know about this? And then he'll wait. And then you're like, ah, scrambling. And then he goes on and he tells you. <laughs> I love that about you. And uh, I was talking to Jim about Gideon. And there's something that I, I, I didn't share. And I want to share it with you guys today. But with Gideon, right, smallest tribe. With Gideon, he was in the smallest clan. He was also, what, the least in his family. I mean, of all the tribes, of all of Israel, he was literally at the bottom. The bottom of the bottom of an entire nation. Gideon. I'm not going to share last Sunday's sermon. <laughs> but that's where Gideon was. And you guys, that's us, right? I believe that's us. We're one of the smallest churches in this region. But God wants to do something mighty. God wants to use us. I'm not calling you guys the bottom of the bottom, okay? Because <laughs> you guys are all great. But God is doing something here. God isn't done. We're not going to hide in this wine press. We're going to come out of it. We're going to hear from the Lord, and we're going to move forward in faith. Amen? Yes. Amen. The cool thing about this 90 days is I feel everything is a throwback. Um, I talk about Uncle Dan all the time. I talk about all of the events we did. I call people out, and we talk history here. And uh, I love that. I love that this is family, Right? One thing Pastor Dan said not, not too long ago before he passed, he said, do everything in faith. Y'all remember that? 
Yeah? If you've been watching online, you guys remember that? Do everything in faith. I remember Uncle Dan saying that about the vaccine, right? If you get the vaccine, uh uh-oh, getting political. Do you, if you get the vaccine, do it in faith, not in fear, right? If you don't get the vaccine, do it in faith and don't live in fear. Amen. Amen, I love that. He said, do everything in faith. We put everything on pause. That was scary to me. But I recognized that we needed to do that. And we need to do that in faith. If you're in the place of, oh no, what happens now? What do I do at the end of the 90 days? I urge you and I encourage you to do it in faith. Be encouraged. The assurance of what we hope for and the certainty of what we do not see. Amen. I love that. Excuse me. All right, Elisa, you ready? Don't do it yet, but we're going to get into the kinetic race. Um, here's another story I want to share with you guys. Do you, any of you guys remember or have ever heard of a kinetic race or what a kinetic race is? Harry remembers. <laughs> yep, yep. So Monument does this thing. I don't know if they do it anymore, but they have this thing called the kinetic race where people in the community, businesses, whatever, we do a blockade to this whole town and we race through the town to the finish. The kinetic piece is that you can't just do it on a bike. You can't just do it solo. You got to be connected to something. Something else has to be moving and you race. So Pastor Dan was like, let's do it. And at the time, this... We, we, you know, we're in the midst of our launch. So much is going on. Um, he shares about it at church, and he goes, let's get together and let's do this thing. Um, he set up this meeting, and he wanted everybody to come. And the only reason I was coming, I had no idea what, was, what it was. All I knew is it said something about being kinetic, was I knew I had to be there because he asked me to be there, (laughs) right? And I was like, okay. And there was a good amount of people at this meeting. So I decided to not participate as much. I sat in the back. You guys, guys, those kids in school, you all sat in the back? I was one of those kids. Anyway, um, they were thinking of ideas. Nothing was really hitting. And I was in the back doodling. Shane, I don't know if you remember this. But uh, I was doodling. And then Pastor Dan goes out of nowhere, Jarrell! what do you got? And I was like, shoot. And uh, all I had in front of me was my doodle. And so I held it up. And that doodle was a picture of a transformer. Any any 80s babies in here know what I'm talking about. But a transformer is a car or a truck or a vehicle that morphs or transforms into a giant robot that protects the earth. (laughs) That's what I drew. And I showed it to him. What he said? Yeah! (laughs) He was like, I love it. And I was like, what? And and since it was my doodle, there's this expectation that I'm supposed to lead this entire project. I didn't even realize that until we kept we got we got going with it. Oh man, you guys. I remember going with Harry to Denver, the Denver area. Harry was able to make phone calls. He got bikes donated. It was awesome. Uh, We had a work day, and people have donated bikes. People have donated paint. People have donated boxes, because I don't think we could build a robot. You know? (laughs) We just didn't have the time. I'm sure we could, right? We could could build a robot. But at the time, we didn't have the time, so we were going to build this robot out of cardboard. Um, Pastor Ben and I were in charge of somehow putting all four bikes together. None of us, we didn't know how to do that. You know, we're not engineers. But luckily, somebody in the community offered their welding services. Isn't that great? I mean, together, you know? We welded these four bikes together, and we brought it to this workday. 
Praise God for Shane. Because if it wasn't for Shane, I, did not, I don't know how to make a robot. I don't know how to put boxes together. But he, he put it together. A picture of it right here. Isn't that cool? <laughs> got, got F's on it for branding. Whose idea was that? But this is Optimus Prime right here in fuel fashion. And we put this bad boy in the middle of four bikes welded together with some random metal we found. <laughs> and we were going to get ready to race. So race time comes, and here's a picture of Seth. I don't know if you can see this, but he has a Transformer hat too. Look at that. <laughs> but those are the four bikes. There's two in front. There's two in the back, right? And you guys, I'm so proud of this thing, you know? And the cool thing about this race was it wasn't just going to be four people racing. We had de designated stops in the middle of the race where we had four other people in like four different spots who were going to replace and sub out the other racers. We got together. We came together. It was awesome. Right? I was uh, first up. I was at the starting line. And I remember I see this girl to my left. She was on a unicycle with a windmill. I was upset. I was like, that's cheating. <laughs> you know? I was in like competition mode, so I was like, somebody come over here to disqualify her. <laughs> but uh, we run the race, and we didn't win. <laughs> that thing was so heavy, and like the front part of the wheels were coming off. You know, we wasn't even on the ground. But we did it. We raced, you guys. We finished. And... Uh, we got something. It was great. We didn't get first prize. We didn't get second. But we got this thing right here. <laughs> the most magnificent machine. We were the best made thing out there. And you guys, we celebrated like we won the Daytona 500. <laughs> we got this thing. And I, oh, we got this thing, right? There's a picture of it too, Lise, if you want to show that better picture. And we were celebrating. We had such representation there. People came out to watch us. We all had our fuel shirts on, as you can see. Um, but we got this Dan, Uncle Dan comes running. He's like, yeah. You know how he moves? He's very um, animated. <laughs> but he comes running. He's like, we did it. We did it. We celebrated. And in my heart, I was like, surely he's going to give me this trophy, right? I put in so much work. I headed up this project, and he didn't give it to me. He held on to it as his prized possession, and he was so proud of it, and I'm, I'm glad he did. I was a little upset, but hindsight, <laughs> I am so glad he held on to it. And uh, that was one of the first times that I saw, if you could go back to the a celebration, the first time that I felt... Such unity, you guys. We came together and, and we did the impossible. Look, we even got sponsors. I don't know who did that. Good job, whoever did that. But we came together. We built this robot. We put all these four bikes together. We screamed. We shouted. People saw who we were in the community. And it was a great time. <laughs> and so, here we are now. If you could turn with me to Philippians 2, 1 through 4. Back when I was in youth ministry in California, we used to do this thing. Um, I'd tell the kids, get to the scripture. And when they got there, they would, they would holler out. And it's when I knew they were there and I was ready to, to share the scripture. Do you guys want to do this with me? But I'm from Northern California. I'm from the East Bay, the place where you don't go out at night sometimes. And so when they got to the scripture, they would all say this. Chua. Chua. It's C-H-Y-E-A-H. It's yeah with a C-H in front of it. So... Let's try this thing out. Philippians 2, 1 through 4. Let me know when you get there. Yes! 
Monument, Colorado. <laughs> All right, this is great. Philippians 2, 1 through 4. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking for your own interests, but each of you to interests of the others. Unity, the coming together. This is what unity looks like. This is what the Bible and Paul at the time was calling out to the people. But I find it interesting. If you could leave that scripture up, Elisa. Um, in the beginning, there's a lot of ifs, right? It says, therefore, if you have any encouragement, if you have any comfort from his love, if any common sharing of the Spirit, if if, 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 if any tenderness or compassion, right? In English, in American, <laughs> if is conditional, right? So if, if is conditional, is this scripture conditional? I'll be around if I can gain something from you. I'll do this favor if I get paid, I'll clean my room if you give me ice cream. It's my son. <laughs> that boy is so conditional. We gotta break that. <laughs> These ifs, you guys, they aren't maybes. They're not that. These ifs are certainties. Amen? And the following statements are called to be true. Let's read it again with that mindset, shall we? Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded and having the same love, being one in spirit and of mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves and not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of the others. You guys, that's who we are called to be. When we talk about unity, when we talk about coming together, this is what we're supposed to do. If we have questions, if we're not sure, let's go back to these scriptures. Let's dive deep into them. Let's come and do this together. Jim has reached out to the community and he is blessing somebody right now. I won't go into details. Ask him about it. I'm not going to share that story. Ask him about it. And it's great, you guys. And I feel that's where we're headed. That's what we need to do now. You know, 90 days of pause doesn't mean not doing anything, like I said. 90 days of pause means reaching out to do everything in faith, to be in community. Amen? So then Paul is saying, let's do this thing. Let's be united. Let's be like-minded, having the same love. And here's another, here's another side of this. This doesn't mean we, we agree about everything every time. It's not unity, Right? It's a unity of heart that says, I'm for you and I love you. It's a place to feel safe and express how we feel. It's a place of freedom. When we do everything in faith, you guys, unity becomes our support system. <laughs> and it's so that we can jump. It's so that we could take that leap. It's so we could take that step of faith, right? When we have unity, when we're together, we feel like we can do anything, right? We, could, we feel like we could do these things. In unity, it was Rachel, myself, before we had kids, Dan, Maria, Eliza, and Seth. And we felt like the Lord was calling us to be here. 
your faith we planted this church. My father-in-law, he says that all the time. He's watching right now. I told him to. <laughs> I told him I was going to talk about him. But he's all about that faith. My father-in-law always says this, and it's usually in conjunction to asking us to stay an extra day in Oklahoma. <laughs> he would go, I can't, I can't do his voice. Um, he'd always go, take a leap of faith. You don't need to go to work on Monday. <laughs> Just stay here. Just do it. That's fine. The kids don't need to go to school. Just take a leap of faith. And man, that is, you know, that gets me every time. I'm like, yeah, I don't need to go to work. <laughs> it's all about faith. And unity builds trust, you guys. Trust is the reason why a lot of us are still here. I love that. But building trust is hard, right? I'm the worst at that. Anyone else in here have trust issues? Just kidding, don't raise your hand. I, I don't trust doctors. I don't trust chiropractors. Josh, I don't trust diving instructors, skydiving instructors. I just don't. You know, we, we got to have a meal first. You got to introduce me to your family. I got to hear your life story if you're going to do something like that with me. <laughs> that's, just, that's just how trust is with me. And it takes time for me to really trust somebody and let them in. I'm doing better. I know that the trust that God is building is different, though. The trust that God is building here is, at the end of the day, no matter what happens, that we have each other's back, that we know each other's character, that we know who God is in each and every one of us, that regardless of what's going on, whether it's political, whether it's religious, whether it's in our families, whether it's a destruction of our entire life. Trust in this house says, I'm never going to leave your side. Trust in this house says, I got your back no matter what, no matter how far you fall or how high you ascend. Trust in this house is what's going to build unity. Amen. So I was at the Rock Church on Monday at the 400. And 400 is, is great. It's a place where pastors and leaders and community leaders come together and pray, come to seek out the will of God. We worship, and people share what God is doing. Why don't we think of that sooner? It's great. <laughs> so I'm there, and I hadn't been back since the celebration service, so I'm in a super sensitive place, um, worshiping, hearing out the Lord. And this guy comes up, and the first thing he says, he goes, I have a prophecy. And his next line was, it's called the smoothie prophecy. <laughs> Were any of you guys at the 400? No? Okay, no worries. Um, and I snickered. I was like, <clears throat> all right, so what is this guy talking about? And he goes, God is bringing each of us together. He said, you got your strawberries, and they're sweet. You got your kale, and they're bitter. You got your chia seeds, they give you energy. And that's us. Then we get put into a blender. We get broken together. Right, this is when it starts making sense. But together, we make an amazing drink. Together, we are a great mix. We are good for the body. We fulfill a need. God is bringing us together for this time of unity. It's not a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder thing. It's a real blending. It's a real brokenness. It's a mixing together. And the fruit and the result of it is something great. He's doing that now, and I believe that. My snickering turned into weeping. Love established fuel church. Love will sustain us. His unfailing love will hold us together. Amen. His unfailing love, he never loses. He always wins. And that's ours. 
That's ours to have. That's a gift he's given us. And what do we do with gifts? This is another Pastor Dan saying. We don't just have a gift that's beautifully wrapped and that's meant for us and it's ours and it's been planned to be given to us. We don't just hold it here. We don't just put it on a shelf. We don't just look at it and say how pretty it is. We open that thing up and we take it because it was given to us. It is ours. We're going to use this thing. And that gift comes from the Lord. And I believe that's what's happening now. 1 Corinthians 14 says, follow the way of love. I've seen a lot of love here, especially lately. That's what we're all about. And I'm going to close with this. You guys, you guys know what a mosaic is? Yeah. Mosaic is art built from broken pieces. <laughs> pieces brought together to create something new. You know, if, you, if you're a few, you come here, if you're part of the community online, you know there's no way we could share a testimony and not talk about our brokenness. Right? There's no way. It's part of our testimony now. Right? But just like I was at, at, the, at the coffee shop, that testimony did things. That testimony brought me to somebody else who was broken. That testimony brought about conversations about the Lord. His spirit was there with us as we spoke to people. Mosaics are carefully crafted and mindfully structured. Each broken piece is unique. Each piece has a specific place. It's my favorite. Each piece is a part of a bigger picture. Man, <laughs> they act in to reveal its vision and purpose. Ah, Lisa, if you could throw that out. Ah, this right here, is, this picture doesn't do it justice. But these are all broken pieces brought together. And you guys, that's Field Church right now. That's this community right now. We're grieving loss. We're in such a place of brokenness. Not just that that we have in common, but everything else that I know and God knows. Not even I know. It's God that knows that you're going through right now whether it's a relationship, whether it's your career, whether it's family, whatever that is, that piece of brokenness that you have in your life, maybe it's your health. Maybe it's, maybe it's your job saying, if you don't do this, then you're fired. Maybe it's, it's, it's something that's taken away your livelihood, changing the entire course of your life. You're in this brokenness of, what do I do next? A mosaic shows beauty, from brokenness. Here's my part. It glorifies the artist. The mosaic glorifies the artist's ability. The ability to make something new from what others might have disregarded or thrown away. The artist took every broken piece and gave it renewed purpose. Colossians 1 17 says this, he is before all things and in him all things hold together. Who is he? Who is he? That's Jesus. Jesus is holding all these things together. The end of this 90 days, in the midst of our 90 days, Jesus is holding it together. At the end of the 90 days, what we do from then, everything we do in faith Jesus is holding together. What you are going through right now, in the midst of your brokenness, Jesus is holding it together, and he desires to make this beautiful portrait, this giant picture, this bigger picture that he has created for you, for this church, for this community. Jesus is not done. He's creating. His artistry is coming out of you guys he is meeting us where we are. He's taking our brokenness and making something new and giving us purpose. Check out these other pictures. 
See, those are people standing next to that. <laughs> yeah, the thing was giant. You can see the grooves in each piece. Next picture. I don't know what church this is. In the mosaic, he is creating unity between us. In the mosaic, he is awakening our faith and giving us more faith to trust in him that he's doing something special in us, in this church. Thank you so much for tuning in to the original Fuel Church YouTube and being a part of what we're doing here at Fuel. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you enjoyed what you heard today, share it with a friend. And if you'd like to support Fuel and Fuel International, information to do so will be in the description below. Have an awesome day. Look forward to seeing you soon.